I can't seem to drum a rhythm today and cut the intro. You know what? Renaissance. I get messages in my comment section with every video where I say the word Renaissance from Americans telling me I don't know how to pronounce it. Which is kind of ironic because the Renaissance period of time happened from like 1300 to 1600 in Europe. And like the USA didn't even exist. Anyway, today I'm not gonna be talking about the actual Renaissance because there's been a far more important Renaissance taking over my channel recently. You know it, the Disney Renaissance. If you need filling in, that's the era from 1989 to 1999 of Disney's films where they kind of made a comeback after making a lot of films you probably don't even know exist. And if you do, probably don't have the fondest memories of them. Or maybe you do have the fondest, but the point is, these films were considered good, and I've got a series I've been doing where I've been ranking their sequels, and the final episode is coming soon, don't worry about that, but I thought before we do it, how about we rank the main films? And yeah, that's what I'm doing today. We're having a tier list. Yeah, let's name the tiers. The blue and bottom tier, I'm gonna call Sympathy Inclusion, SI. Um, there's one film sitting among there, you know who you are, that doesn't really belong in the Renaissance. I'm sorry, not really, I'm not actually that sorry. And it's a, a sympathy inclusion, we'll get to it, don't worry. Which brings us on to the second bottom tier, the green tier. This film exists, the E tier, it exists. Like none of these films are that bad, but like I'm not gonna be going out my way to tell someone you have to watch this film. To me, these ones just exist. Which brings us on to the third from bottom tier. Woohoo! This film, succeeded in making me think it was a good film. The W tier, guys. Oh my God, these names just, they get better every episode. And then finally, the top tier. Yeah, so this tier list is kind of small. I don't know if I mentioned that. It's kind of like a tier list mini because there's only 10 films. So there's no need to get like six tiers out and try and rank them. I'm just doing four tiers. And yeah, sorry, the top tier, I'm just gonna call top tier just T because I ran out of creative names, but like if it's in the top tier, I would probably consider it like top 10, 20 animated films of all time. So high praise to make it into the top tier. And without further ado, let's get into it. First up, we're gonna do Rescuers Down Under. Yeah, this one is the sympathy inclusion. You might have guessed that. It's a bit confusing, the existence of this one in the Renaissance, but basically it's a sequel to a film that came out in 1977. And I guess when they were like deciding when this Renaissance began, they really wanted to include The Little Mermaid. But if they included The Little Mermaid, they kind of had to include The Rescuers Down Under too because it came out after The Little Mermaid. And The Rescuers itself isn't the best film ever. It's not that great, to be honest with you. Like I watched it the other day and had a lot more nostalgia for it than I feel like I should have because I didn't even know I'd seen it. But viewing it from my perspective now, the characters weren't that interesting. The story was okay at best and the concept behind the story was average and the sequel was worse. Like the animation was significantly better. I will give them credit for that. I guess they tried to expand the universe by traveling to Australia, but I, I still can't work out what the point of them going to Australia was other than to put the words down under in the title. Like the main character, who was Australian, apparently, didn't even have an Australian accent. It was just an American. Yeah, Mom? What about your breakfast? I've got some sandwiches in my pack. We'll be out for supper. No worries, Mom. And I'm, I'm a bit confused about all of it, to be honest with you. So yeah, it's the sympathy inclusion. Can we agree on that? Tarzan is really looking me up and down right now. So you know what? That's gonna go in the W tier. Tarzan, what can I say about Tarzan? Guys, I actually don't know what I wanna say about Tarzan. I like, I made a 20 minute video on its sequels and I'm sat here looking at the original and I'm like, yeah, it was good. Wait, I know what I can say, one sec. Just don't adjust your sets, I'm gonna be right back. Okay, so I actually have a fun story for this one. I remember watching Tarzan quite a lot growing up, which you might be thinking, well, isn't that the case for all of them? But it's not really for me. I was born in 1998, so by the time I was going to the cinema, these films had all come out, and like, the first film I remember seeing in cinemas was Monsters, Inc., which, if that kind of paints a picture, like, I was definitely going to the cinema when Pixar were crushing the animation game. And given I wasn't really born into like a big Disney household, I didn't even watch all of these films growing up. Like most of them I probably saw at friends' houses or like on the final day at school when the teacher would bring in like the TV and you'd put a little movie in and you'd watch a movie. Or did 
did every school do that or was like that, that was that's normal right anyway we must have had Tarzan at home or something because I remember watching it growing up and I remember one of my best friends had this toy of the elephant from Tarzan whose name has escaped me in the minute I needed it Tantor! Okay, so I really wanted this Tantor toy. I can't work out why, but like, I remember this was the only thing I put on my Christmas list that year. Which is, like, beyond me. That that was the only thing I wanted for Christmas. But, I got it. I got a Tantor toy. And, uh, yeah, I have this now. But, yeah, I must have liked Tarzan enough growing up for that to be the only thing I wanted for Christmas. And watching it as an older human being, it holds up, it's a fun film. Next up, I'm gonna do Pocahontas. This, I think it's one of the weaker ones, if I'm honest, like, it isn't as good as Tarzan. It's a lot better than The Rescuers Down Under. I felt like this film wasn't really for me. Like, I didn't even know it was based on a true story until I mentioned its sequel in a video, and everyone commented, uh, Seamus, you know it's based on a true story, right? And for that reason, I imagine there's like a lot of historical inaccuracies with this film that I didn't even know about. So maybe if you dislike it for that reason, I, like I wouldn't even know. So like my personal and uneducated take from this film is that Pocahontas is a good character. I really like Pocahontas as a character. It's just the film's a bit slow. Nothing really happens, does it? <laughs> she meets John Smith after like half an hour. They fall in love despite the fact she can't speak to him, but learns to speak to him really quickly, and then the bad man gets angry about that. They have a fight, John takes a bullet for someone, and that's it. That's the film, right? There really isn't that much to say. It's Pocahontas. Next up, I'm gonna do Little Mermaid. I'm, not, I'm struggling to find like ways to separate these films, and I think The Little Mermaid is the best one. I said this in my Little Mermaid sequels video. It's my favorite film out of the Disney Renaissance. And I don't know why, I just do, okay? I've got no massive nostalgia or childhood connection to it, just... I like it the most. But you know what? Today, I'm gonna give you a reason why this film's number one once I can think of it. I feel like everything about this story is such a cliche that usually I'd criticize films for, but I love it. I need a reason for why I like this film. Like the music's great, but then again, the music's great in all of these films. And I almost feel like you could do a separate tier list just ranking the music from these. That's how exceptional, it's almost a separate entity. And you can't really use that as an argument to propel it above another because yeah, that music's great, but so is The Lion King, so is Beauty and the Beast. All of the music's good. I like fish, so th that, that, that works in its favor. <laughs> I guess the truth is, growing up, I really wanted to be a mermaid myself. And when I found out I couldn't, this was my escape. <laughs> it's not even true. <laughs> if that was true, it would be such a great reason. But it's not. It's not. I. I uh, this is maybe the worst tier list I've ever done. I can't even rationalize why this is number one. It, but it is, guys. It is. Can we just? Can we live with it? Can, can we just? Okay. Uh, let's do Hercules. I watched this one the other day, and it's going. It's going up next to Tarzan. I don't know if I'm just on like a Greek god high right now because. I'm currently reading Percy Jackson, I'm on the Battle of the Labyrinth. I read these books growing up, and they're holding up. And because like, I'm on this Greek god high, like, just give me all of the Greek mythology content. Watching Hercules just sat so right with me the other night. Like, I don't know if usually it would be with Pocahontas, but today, it's up there with Tarzan, and like, this is probably what gets me down the most about doing these tier list videos, is my opinions change and like develop over time. And like, right now, I am having a bias towards Hercules. And maybe in four months time, I'm gonna have a massive bias towards rescuers down under for some reason. But like, these then become the opinions that I put onto the internet forever. And actually, massive detour, but while we're here, can I move Ratatouille up a tier? on my Pixar tier list because it's been bothering me for like nine months. I just, I put it too low. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I'm loving all of the Greek mythology content right now. Like this is a good fun love story. The music's great again. And I'm trying to picture the gods when I'm reading the Percy Jackson books in their animated form now for some reason. And yeah, I'm just, I'm having a good time. Okay, just let me have a good time. Hercules is good. Let's do the hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah, this is going next to Pocahontas. This isn't the best one. I also think I grew up with this one similarly to Tarzan, but don't have as many fond memories of it. I don't know, these two films being Pocahontas and The Hunchback of Notre Dame are relatively unconventional compared to the rest of the Disney Renaissance, where the main character doesn't actually end up with the love interest, and 
It's really interesting that I've ranked them both in the same tier. Like, usually I like unconventional storytelling and twist endings, but I guess the main stories really don't hold up for them to be remembered that fondly for me. And I say remembered, I've watched all of these films in the last couple months. I feel like there's this whole formula going on in my head right now to work this out of like nostalgia multiplied by my most recent experience, divided by the music, cancelling out the sequels, and in this case, it ended up in the second from bottom tier, but it's so close and so hard to separate these films. I didn't realize how hard this was gonna be. Like, there really isn't that much of a difference between the top and bottom film if you disregard Rescuers Down Under, which we're gonna do, kind of. Let's do Mulan next. I'm gonna put Mulan also in the second tier, which I'm kind of afraid is gonna start to get crowded. I kinda wanna put the next four films all in the second tier. <laughs> because they're that hard to separate. Guys, I don't know what I can say about Mulan that I haven't already praised other films for. Like, I think this is a really well done film that kind of demonstrates what the Disney Renaissance was all about with a strong protagonist, a funny side character, good music throughout, and maybe that's the best way of putting it. Maybe it being this film that I can't say anything original about is the perfect way of putting it. And that's, I guess, what is so great about the Disney Renaissance. It's kind of these films that do pretty similar things, but manage to tell their own stories. And like, you couldn't get any more different from the likes of Tarzan or Hercules than Mulan. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna do Aladdin, which is also going in the middle tier. Um, come on, if it will move, it did move eventually. Aladdin, in my opinion, is a really fun movie. Like when I start reshuffling this, it's gonna be on the higher end. I think it may have the best villain out of the Disney Renaissance, yeah. I would go with that, yeah. I think Jafar's a really good character, and I remember being actively scared of him growing up, which I don't think I can say about any of the other villains from this. I also think Aladdin is the most morally gray main character out of the lot. Like, is he good? Is he bad? Yeah, kind of. He becomes good, and that's really good character development throughout the film. If we're just gonna go through the generic list, great main character, big check. Great side character, even bigger check. Great music. Yeah, I, it, I don't think it's the best music out of the lot, but again, that's a whole separate tier list if we're gonna really talk about music. So, you know what? No, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna put it in the top tier. I can't believe I actually just did that. <laughs> I need to play this all the time, just free to do whatever I want and should I move it back? Next up, we're gonna do The Lion King, yeah. I'm also putting this in the second tier, shock horror. To be honest, I feel like I've covered this a few times before. Like, the Lion King's a great film. The story's good, the music's good, and yeah, everything about it's good, but I'm just not the biggest fan of animal-centered stories, personally. But obviously, this is based off Hamlet, so the fact they've been able to retell it so a younger audience can appreciate it with, as I said, amazing musical numbers is, just something worth applauding, and it does a really good job. This is gonna be a really weird flex, but I think growing up, I saw the West End production of The Lion King like six or seven times, and I still think that is better than the movie. That's my, that's my hot take on The Lion King. The show that's based off the movie is better than the actual movie. Like, I'm not even that big of a theater junkie. I think I went a few times with my choir, and yeah, it's a good show, and it's a decent film, but I wouldn't say it's in my top 20 animated films of all time. I'm not even sure it would make my top 30, but it's good. I just think there are a lot of better animated movies out there. And that's what brings us on to the final one, Beauty and the Beast, which is also going in this second tier. You know, I'm gonna sort it out right now. Beauty and the Beast, Tarzan, Hercules, Mulan, Lion King. That's the official ranking. Beauty and the Beast is really good. I don't know how well this film ages morally under today's current climate with a captive falling in love with their captor. Like, should Stockholm Syndrome really be a key compartment in a film intended for kids? Probably not, but as films go, it's a pretty good film. Again, I feel like this film ticks off all of the generic boxes that these films tick off in flying colors. Like, even the villain has a great side character. And matter of fact, the villain has the best side character. We're all agreed LeFou is the best character, right? Can I just go through some like generic review terms to finish this off? Like, it's a well-paced story, the soundtrack's great, the animation is unbelievable for 1991. Like anytime I watch it, I'm like, I'm unwilling to believe this was made in 1991. Okay, no, I'm on board now. That is it. That is my final Disney Renaissance tier list. It's probably a really, really bad set of opinions, so make sure to Tell me where I went wrong in the comments. And if you want another episode of Tier List Mini, make sure to leave a like. We can subscribe and watch another video and 
click on my Patreon link. I don't know why I said we can do that. I can't. You can't. I literally can't subscribe to my own channel. So you're going to have to do it. You're going to take one for the team. I'm sorry. I don't make the rules. And all the other stuff that I mentioned too. And yep, yeah, that, that is it.